Hello again and welcome back to London and also welcome back to the UK, a country officially in deflation. So what does this mean for the sterling when well, I've been speaking to Alistair Cotton from Currencies Direct? Right, so, so we officially have deflation in the UK. Um, at what point, Alistair, does this become just a touch of deflation or does it become, you know, that term, the deflation death spiral? Yeah. So first of all, 0.1% is almost a statistical anomaly. I mean, if we had positive 0.1, nobody would be saying anything. I know it is negative, but it is a very, very small amount and it could be revised upwards next, next month. So um, that's the first thing to say. Deflation has to sort of psychologically take hold for it to enter what you just described. Mm. So it would take, I'd say, many months to get to that stage and it'd have to get much more negative um, for people to really start um, anticipating further falls in the price in price levels. I know the Bank of England are saying they're expecting inflation to tick up gently mm. and, and many uh, uh, analysts are saying the same thing, but it strikes me that everyone seems to have discounted OPEC and the, pa and the fact that there's a big OPEC meeting in June. If they decide to increase uh, production to suppress prices, isn't that going to cause further deflationary pressures? It absolutely would, but again, it would be uh, temporary uh, price price pressures. It could cause a big drop, right? But if everyone's an anticipating those that that price drop to fall out of the figures in a year's time, it has. If we're going to get a prolonged period of deflation, it would be real contraction in bank lending that would be the the key um, data point to watch. And bank lending is contracting in the UK at the moment. However, it's really difficult to ascertain whether that's because other non-bank providers of credit are coming into the market, which they definitely are, but how much, how much of an impact that's having, or if it's, if it's something more fundamental. It's too difficult to say at this point, but it's not feeding in. You, I think, again, to come back to it, you need to see a real big contraction in bank lending to, to have a prolonged period of deflation. Yeah, we've also seen various uh, forecasts for the UK economy revised down. Yeah. Um, if we take this deflationary pressure as a positive thing, I know the UK economy is performing relatively strongly versus its peers, but but why isn't the, the UK economy performing even stronger now we do have that political stability? Yeah, well it's down to what the Bank of England have identified, this productivity puzzle. Mm. Um, we've got great employment at the moment, but everyone's employ uh, producing much less than they should be. Um, I don't know the answer to that, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, but it, th what deflation is very good for, and it's almost a f an open goal for the government, is that it boosts take-home pay for... for for, for, for workers and that's the key political consideration at the moment making sure people are getting paid more and um, if wages aren't going up if you get a bit of deflation it's, it's, it's brilliant for the government so I don't suppose they're going to do too much to sort of change things. Yeah, what, what does this all mean for Mark Carney? Do you think he's, he's scared to, to front run the, the Fed in terms of any interest rate hike? Absolutely and he said as much sort of in the inflation report last week. Part of the reason we're down in uh, this negative territory is the pound's strength against the euro. It's not been so strong against the dollar, but since the election we've seen a bit of a rebound. I'm sure that's having impact as well. He does not want to front run the Fed, as you said, because sterling will go through the roof quite quickly. And when you've got low inflation, it's better to have a weaker currency. Sure, exactly. And, and let's just finish off with the currency implications of all of this. Um, we, we've, had, we've got that political certainty for the UK now. Do you expect the pound to outperform the euro and the, and, and the dollar? I think um, short term, yes. We've still got this uh, Brexit situation um, unfolding as we go along. We've no idea when the vote will be potentially 2017, but Akani said the other day, as soon as possible really, and I know that David Cameron's got a lot of negotiations to go through to sort of get a better deal for the UK, but is he, I think he'll only do the vote if he thinks he's going to win it. So uh, if there's a groundswell of support um, sooner rather than later that there is um, demand for staying in the, the EU, then I think we'll, we'll have that vote and that'll clear up something else. Longer term, yes, sterling strength. Um, it looks like the Fed as well are going to push back interest rate decisions to 2016 as well. So we're going to be gravitating towards 160 on the think sterling dollar and above 140 in sterling euro. Well, thanks to Alistair. Stay tuned for more interviews and analysis, but from London, goodbye for now.